The Gilson testing screens are rugged, tough machines that uses a quick-acting hydraulic pump system to clamp and release the screen trays within the unit. If you find your screen trays become loose within the separator during testing, or you can't clamp them tight enough for testing, leaks or faulty seals in the hydraulic clamping system may be causing the problem. Contact Gilson Technical Support for help in diagnosing these issues and what steps should be taken to resolve them. For this video, we are only explaining the process of refurbishing the Gilson hydraulic pump. At this point, we've unplugged the testing screen Remove the top cover, unfasten the side cover, and remove the screen trays. Next, remove the clips holding the hydraulic lines. Now, unfasten the three bolts that hold the pump in place. To gain access to the rightmost bolt, rotate the 90 degree hydraulic fitting up. Mark the pump cover and pump, so when reinstalled later, it will face in the same manner. Now, remove the pump cover and set it aside. Lift the pump out and drain the hydraulic fluid into a container for proper disposal. Now disconnect the hydraulic hose fittings at the cylinders. Make sure that you have rags in place to minimize spillage of hydraulic fluid. Once the hydraulic lines have been removed, move the pump and hoses to a workbench or other solid clean area for further disassembly. Now, remove the hydraulic lines from the pump. As you begin to work directly with the pump, be sure to have the testing screen manual handy for reference. Next, remove the cotter pin from the pump handle assembly and pull the pin and set them aside. After the handle has been freed, take out the two screws from the plunger guide and seal. Now remove the plunger from the pump body and inspect the plunger and pump housing to make sure that there are no visible scoring. If scoring is evident, the pump will have to be replaced. Now remove the pressure release plug, which is the largest plug on the pump. The pressure release spring and thrust pin with O-ring should come out easily when the pump is tilted. Inspect these items for wear and set them aside. Severely worn parts may signal further damage to the pump itself. Next, remove the pressure check plug on the underside of the pump, closest to the pump handle. Removing it will also yield the pressure check spring and pressure check thrust pin with an O-ring. If the pressure check thrust pin remains in the pump, then carefully work the pin out using a small pointed tool, using care to avoid scoring the sides of the pump wall. Again, inspect all items removed and set them aside. Next, remove the intake plug located on the side of the pump and away from the pump handle, as well as the intake spring and check ball. Inspect for wear and set aside. Finally, remove any remaining plugs located in close proximity to the pressure release, pressure check, and intake check plugs. It is important that you do not touch the bypass assembly. This is set at the factory using special fixtures and should not be changed or adjusted. If you have accidentally removed or adjusted the bypass assembly, Please contact Gilson Technical Support for instructions on how to re return the pump to Gilson to reset the bypass assembly to factory settings. Now that all appropriate components have been removed, clean all residue buildup from the pump. Next, inspect the entire pump to confirm that it is completely dry and free from dirt. Now you are ready to rebuild the pump using parts supplied from your Gilson Pump Repair Kit. Install the intake check ball and using a blunt metal object and with a light tap from a handle of a hammer or mallet, seat the check ball into place. 
Next, install the intake spring, the longest and thinnest spring in the repair kit, and finished with installing the new plug. Next, fit the pressure check O-ring on the pressure check release pin and install it on the underside of the pump. Follow with a slightly thicker and shorter pressure check spring, and then finish with a new plug. Now insert the smaller portion of the pressure release pin into the pump housing. Next, fit the O-ring on the larger diameter portion of the pressure release thrust pin before inserting it into the pump housing around the smaller pressure release pin. The cone-shaped spring is then installed with the narrow end facing inward toward the pump body. Finish by installing the new plug. Now, reinstall any remaining plugs. Take apart the plunger from the handle assembly by removing the chain link pin and pulling the link out. Next, drive out the spring pin that holds back the stroke limiting spring and washers. Once removed, slide the limiting spring and washers off as well as inspecting the old guide and seal before setting it aside. Now, clean the plunger and affix the two new plunger O-rings. Reinstall the new plunger guide and seal, reuse the stroke limiting spring and washers, and drive the spring pin back into place. Now, reattach the chain link. Be sure to dip the plunger in hydraulic oil before inserting it back into the pump housing. Next, secure the guide and seal with the two original screws and then reattach the handle assembly. Now, reinstall the hydraulic lines to the pump. Now you're ready to reattach the pump to the testing screen. Return the pump to the testing screen. Affix the pump to the testing screen using the original bolts. Now reattach the lines at the cylinders and make sure to leave the fittings loose so you can bleed the lines later. Now refill the pump with hydraulic oil. Take care not to overfill. The oil level, when full, should be a quarter inch from the top. Replace the pump cover in the same orientation during its removal. Now bleed the hydraulic lines by working the handle on the pump as if we were clamping the screen trays. Observe the hoses at the cylinder fittings. As soon as fluid appears, tighten the fittings. Pull the pump handle to release the trays. Remove the pump cover again, noting its orientation as you did earlier. If necessary, refill any fluid needed to fill the pump reservoir to a quarter inch from the top. Next, Reinstall the cover on the pump based on the alignment marks made earlier. An improperly installed pump cover will result in hydraulic fluid leaking out of the pump cover vent. Now, pump the hydraulic system to full pressure again to complete a final check for any hydraulic fluid leaks. Once you have confirmed there are no leaks, pull the pump handle to release the trays. Finally, install all hose clips, safety guards, and covers before returning the unit to operation. For any questions concerning replacing the pump on your Gilson testing screen, or for any Gilson product, please contact your Gilson technical support team.